I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Jesus Berdeja. Go for it, Dr. Berdeja. <laughs> thank you, Jenny, and thank you to the Maloma crowd as I work my way through here. Actually, interesting, thank you for having me back, I guess I should say. Um, the last in-person meeting I actually had in March, early March, was the meeting we had in San Diego. So uh, this is actually yeah, uh, we, on memory. So yeah. we cut it close, didn't we? <laughs> it was, haven't, uh, haven't left my desk since. So, um, <laughs> all right. So, so thank you again. So I'm going to be, I was tasked with talking to you about blend rep or Belantin and Mapidotin. Um, and so just newly FDA approved. Um, but before I actually go into uh, into blend rep, um, this is a type of immunotherapy, and I think I think it's always nice to kind of think about what, when we say immunotherapy, what we're talking about. So um, here I, I put sort of the different things we can do in terms of using our immune system to help it fight myeloma. And one of the things you can do, of course, is you can target the myeloma directly, uh, and usually we do that with the monoclonal antibodies, which BlendRep is, is one of them. You can also boost the, the myeloma fighting cells that are present in your body, like your T cells, and this can be done via CAR T cells, for example. Um, and of course, you can actually overcome the immune suppression or the ability of myeloma to sort of escape the immune system. And this is actually through checkpoint inhibitors and the imits and the cell mounts that actually Dr. Lonia will be talking to you about some more. And of course, you can do vaccines just like you do in uh, an infectious disease to try and boost the immunity against myeloma. But we're going to be talking about antibodies. And in particular, when we look at antibodies, there's three different types of antibodies we talk about when we're... Uh, when we're talking about therapeutic antibodies. And the first one is what we call the naked antibody, and that's the first one here. And that's the antibody that has nothing attached, uh, but it is directed against a protein on the surface of the myeloma cell. Uh, and then once it attaches, it can induce mechanisms to kill the myeloma cell by itself or bring in other parts of the immune system to help kill your myeloma. The other thing you can do uh, is you can actually take that antibody and bind a toxin uh, or a radiation source that can then be delivered directly into the myeloma cell and kill the cell that way. And of course, you can actually now take also two different antibodies and take portions of the antibodies or the entire antibody, put them together, and now you have a bispecific antibody that has two targets. One binds your myeloma, one binds your T cells. It activates the T cells to go kill the myeloma cells. We're going to be talking about the antibody drug conjugates. So what do we mean by antibody drug conjugates? So the, the, the idea here is that you have an antibody that goes to a particular target. This is then linked to a drug uh, that leads to basically chemotherapy delivered uh, directly to uh, the myeloma cell, and we call that the payload. And so over here in this cartoon, you see the antibody with the payload bound binds to the surface of the cell that gets internalized, and then once inside this gets cleaved, and the chemotherapy basically is delivered into the cell. So Blenrep or Belantamum mafodotin, it's an antibody with target to BCMA, and it is bound to this payload called MMAF or monomethyl uh, orostatin F. And so again, the idea is you bind to BCMA, it gets internalized, the MMAF is delivered and it kills the myeloma cell. And BCMA, of course, has become a very important target. Uh, it is a, it's, it's also known as B-cell maturation antigen, and this is found basically on all plasma cells uh, and mature B-cells and in no other cell in your body. So almost by definition, myeloma cells have to have it. And so we have now a lot of therapies that are being uh, developed with Blenrep being actually the first that is approved, but that includes also the CAR T's and the bispecifics. So when we're looking at Blenrep's development, we talk about the DREAM studies. And this is the name of the studies that you'll be seeing lots. And so the first study on the left is DREAM1, and that was the original study, the phase one study that established that uh, belantamamaphodotin or Blenrep was safe and effective. And the dose that was determined was 3.4 milligrams per kilogram. This is delivered uh, via vein uh, every three weeks. That dose uh, worked well, but we started seeing some toxicities, and in particular, what we call uh, keratopathy or corneal toxicities of the eye uh, that were particular to this therapy. And so when they developed the DREAM2 study that Dr. Loniel actually led, um, we saw that they actually tested two doses. They tested the dose that was determined in the phase one study, 
But then they also tested one dose level down, so uh, the 2.5 milligram per kilogram uh, dose level. And so the DREAM2 study uh, was done in patients who were really heavily pretreated. So they had these patients that had at least six or seven prior therapies for their myeloma. They all have had a PI, things like Velcade or Kyprolis, an IMID like Revlimid or Pumlist, and an anti-CD38 antibody like Darcelex. So in these heavily pretreated patients, uh, you see that this is the 2.5 milligram dose and the 3.4 milligram dose. And the overall response rate uh, was actually quite good 32 and 35%. These are response rates similar to what we've seen with some other drugs that have been FDA approved by themselves, kind of like Darcelex uh, and Selenexor, for example, and even Pomelis. But remember, these patients had failed many of those drugs already. So um, the median progression-free survival is about three to four months. Again, very similar to other drugs we've seen. But what's interesting, the duration of response, especially in the 2.5 milligram uh, dose, uh, was actually quite long at 11 months. And that means the patients that actually had a response kept that response for 11 months. So based on this data, Blenrip was FDA approved on August 5th, 2020. And as we know, in myeloma, uh, combination usually works better. Uh, and so you will start seeing a lot of studies uh, called the DREAM studies in combination. And we got a sneak peek at ASCO this year from the DREAM6 study in the combination of Blenrip with Velcade and dexamethasone uh, with very early impressive results that were presented by Dr. Nuka uh, at ASCO. And so we're going to be seeing combinations uh, with uh, 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 with many of our other anti-myeloma drugs, and these are in development and are enrolling, so stay tuned for those. But I do want to spend some time on the actual side effect profile and toxicity, and in particular of the, of the dose that is FDA approved. So one new toxicity uh, that we are seeing that uh, we didn't have before with any of our myeloma therapies is this idea of keratopathy or corneal toxicity. This was seen in about two thirds of patients and it manifested as blurred vision, dry eye, sometimes decreased vision, and sometimes completely asymptomatic. So patients didn't notice it at all. This tended to be reversible uh, if it's identified early uh, and the drug is held uh, and sometimes uh, uh, dose reduced. Uh, it rarely had to be stopped, but sometimes it does. Uh, it does require a very close ophthalmologic evaluation or, uh, and, and now that it's approved, uh, this drug will be approved under the REMS program, uh, which will have particular requirements in terms of monitoring uh, when, when, when someone's treated on this drug. The other, uh, reaction, uh, the other side effects were actually very mild, uh, just like with antibodies. If anybody's ever had Darcelex, you know that they can be significant infusion reactions with antibodies. 20% uh, of patients had infusion reactions, but these were usually pretty mild and, and mostly seen with the very first dose. And then in terms of other important side effects, uh, just like with many drugs that we see in myeloma, uh, low platelets and anemia uh, were the most common uh, with low platelets actually potentially getting to very low levels. So where are we now? So these are some unanswered questions. So you know, in terms of Blenrep or the antibody drug conjugates, um, how does it compare to the naked antibodies such as Darcelex? You know, is it going to be similar in terms of efficacy? We're seeing similar response rates, but again, these were patients that had already failed Darcelex. It should be different in that it, it acts like an antibody, but it also has this chemotherapy that it can deliver to the cell itself. So it has different ways of killing the myeloma cell. And that's what we're hoping for, that it will be more potent. Uh, will it actually replace the current antibodies or will it just complement them? And we don't know that. And that will be answered in studies. And then this eye toxicity that we're seeing, this, this is an issue particularly related to the payload itself. So it's not necessarily the antibody, but it's actually the chemotherapy that it's attached to. So there are other antibody drug conjugates looking at different payloads to see if we can get away from this toxicity. But nonetheless, you know, the question is, you know, will this particular toxicity limit the potential for combinations? Early on, we're seeing that that does not seem to be the case, and hopefully that won't be. And then the other question, as you know, in myeloma, we tend to treat for long periods of time. Uh, will this toxicity allow us to be able to give this drug uh, long term, uh, or will it have to be limited to only so many cycles. And again, uh, so far uh, in the early studies, patients have been able to get treatment for a long time, uh, but we'll have to see as we get more data. And then the question becomes, I, talk, I talked about the 
that Blenrep actually binds to this protein called BCMA. And BCMA is sort of the darling protein right now. And that's what a lot of the CAR T therapy and the bispecific therapy is geared towards. So, so the question becomes, how does, how does Blenrep compare to other BCMA therapies such as these? Uh, and I think that will be an important, um, uh, it will be very important as we move forward because it's very possible that we'll have a BCMA CAR T uh, that will be FDA approved by the end of this year or early next year, and perhaps even two. And so the question will become, how do we, how do we choose between the drugs? Uh, and one important thing is that we don't understand when someone gets treated with the BCMA therapy, how it fails. Uh, and so we don't know if you are treated with one BCMA therapy, whether you can actually respond to another. Uh, and again, that will come with time uh, and with studies. So in terms of my take home points, um, uh, I would say the BCMA directed therapies are very exciting and very effective. Uh, Blenrep is the first of these to be FDA approved. Um, but these novel therapies do have new types of toxicities that uh, we should be considering and should be man managed appropriately. And I think with that, I actually will stop uh, and uh, let you move on with the program and answer questions, I guess, at the end. Thank you.